trouble with these markers. Sometimes they come off just, well, tonight it doesn't want to come off right. Okay, no problem, I will use a different marker. So I'm going to take a lighter marker, I'm going to take my FS1, and I am going to kind of pull the color down. And you notice, see, it's got a different, it's darker, it almost looks darker. That's okay, we're going to work with it. I'm going to pull the color down. Sometimes I have trouble with my markers. These are the Spectrum Noirs, which I love. I love my Spectrum Noirs, but getting the lids off can be a real pain. So see, I want the lighter color going across her face. <clears throat> so it's okay that it's not quite the shade I wanted. It'll be fine. So I want to go back over here where her hairline is at and just put in a bit of a shadow and I'm trying to be light-handed. Is anybody in Florida where it's nice and warm? Oh, it's still cold where Saunders at. And weather is beautiful here in Florida. <laughs> ah, I love I love the weather in Florida. I kick myself because I did live in Miami, and I moved because I I moved away from Miami because I felt like every day was the same day. It was always. 85 and sunny, 85 and sunny. That's what I used to complain about. And I moved to Savannah, which I loved. And then for whatever reason, I moved here to Southern Indiana. And now I'm kind of stuck. <laughs> the uh, cost of living has drastically increased in the Savannah area. And I just can't really quite afford to move back there. I'm trying to see if I'm in frame. So, here I sit, Southern Indiana, which is, you know, it's a, a pretty area, lots of farmland. This is Amish country. We have the largest Amish population in Indiana. <laughs> Still not hot enough. You know what? I love, love, love very hot weather. Very, very hot weather. It's my favorite. Oh, I got my cap off. So this is my light. I love it when it's like 95, 98, just uh, around, hovering around 100. I love it. It's my favorite temperature. People think I'm crazy, but that's the temperature I absolutely love. I love it nice and warm. So this is um, the tri-blend. So it is FS6, FS7, and FS8. But if you had noticed, when... I I um, opened up a lighter, an FS1, it came, it was quite dark because their gen different generations of ink are actually different colors. And they have new ink out and you can refill your old markers with the new ink. But, you know, it's pricey to buy ink, so you only want to buy it when you need to. You know, don't, I mean, you can buy it a little bit before you need it, but I mean, just don't go out and buy every color ink there is, unless you're happen to have a lot of fun money. I kind of buy as I need it. You know, you have to be, uh, crafting is fun, but you can't let it uh, rule your pocketbook. I'm just kind of putting in a shadow. There we go. And then here's her arms. See, here's her arm back here. I'm just going to go ahead and make her arm a little bit darker. There we go. What I love is the ocean. I love um, the ocean and marsh. The marsh. I love the marsh. That's what I miss about Savannah. Is the My friends think I'm crazy. I love the smell of the marsh. The um, salt water. The mud. I just, I don't know. I miss it. Missing the animals that used to live in the marsh. and It's my favorite thing. And whenever I go back to Savannah, first thing I do is go down to Tybee and go to the beach and just kind of take in the, the smell and the feel of it. And that's what I do if I'm in Florida too. First thing, I go by the ocean and I just enjoy I just enjoy the water, the smell. 
nothing, um, I don't know, for me, nothing I like better. And I know some people are desert people, some people are um, mountain people, but I'm a beach person. But I, I like to walk on the beach. It's not that I like to lay out for hours. I like to walk on the beach and just feel the waves. So I'm just kind of going in again. This is the darker. And just sort of making a shade. And sometimes I'll go in again even. And add a little bit more of a shade. Because I'm heavy handed, I do it in layers. I try to um, build my layers instead of just all at once putting them on. Okay. Hi, Stephanie. How are you? Hi, Sharon. Oh, is Christine on? Hi, Christine. Yes, I had an accident. <laughs> you guys are going to think, my God, this woman, she was sick. She was sick. And then, um, oh my gosh, oh, my electricity was out. And then, yes, you know, I've gained a little bit of weight. And the baby, of course, in the last year has gained weight. Because you know, she's going to be two in May, May 24th, and we had a really bad storm, and I was on our porch swing with the baby, which I have done last year, no problem, and all of a sudden, I, I heard a noise, and I thought, oh, uh-oh, and the swing collapsed, and because I was holding Kyra, I didn't want the swing to... Um, fall on top of her you know because it broke on one side and so of course that's the side I'm going down to I was really worried about her getting hurt um, so I put my legs I was trying to catch the swing and so I had my legs right underneath and of course the swing collapsed on top and then with my weight and her weight I uh, hurt my ankle <laughs> pretty bad I had to go by ambulance to the hospital because I could not walk and um, one leg has a really big old bruise all across the back of it and I tore the ligaments in my ankle they said it wasn't broken they said that um, soft tissue damage and I tore the ligaments but it is huge I don't know I don't know if I believe it's not broken because it's very hard to walk um, and I can't move my toes <laughs> so I am very accident prone <sighs> So that was my adventure and the baby she's okay when it when the swing fell I was holding on to her and then when we got close to the ground I um, kind of pushed her off to the side into the grass because I did not want to fall on top of her I was scared to death of hurting her so that was my adventure <laughs> so yes I am very accident prone but you know right now being ill it getting sick is not they don't want to touch you when you're in the hospital naturally because they're worried about COVID and so it's very difficult when you're there to get you know treated and then I felt so bad I kept apologizing because I'm taking up the time when there's people there that are sick and really need their care so I felt really bad but it was funny because they sent the two um smallest not tilt this a little bit more two smallest people i mean they both had to be under 100 pounds each two smallest emts that they could find in town to come and take me to the hospital i was like oh my goodness but that was my adventure and i do laugh about it i mean it does hurt but i do laugh about it because i am very very accident prone not my first time on crutches but the older you get, man, it's the harder it is to hold up your weight and everything. And I'm just thankful the baby is okay. So there we go. So I, I know I was talking. I used LY1 and then I used um, the GB1, GB3, and GB5 to do her hair. And I'll show you the paper I'm going to use that I got my inspiration from. So you can kind of know what direction I'm going with the colors. This is Verity paper. It's so pretty. I love it. I love it. I had gotten it a while back. So it was quite reasonable. Because <clears throat> you know me. I'm not spending a lot. <laughs> I like to find bargains. I need to wear a bubble to keep me safe. <laughs> my students are like... Because I teach 
um, ESL, and they knew I had hurt myself. <laughs> just laughed at me. I'm like, my gosh. Because they were really worried about me when I had gotten sick um, in uh, March. And that kind of, that really worried them. So they were like, my gosh, what all can I do to you? You know, what can you do to yourself? But they have no idea. <laughs> all right. So I'm just adding a little bit of red here and there. And then I'm going to do her boots. In a moment. I'm going to do her boots in a moment. Because red bleeds. So you have to be really careful. Alright. <clears throat> so for her dress. I. It's going to go two different ways. But I think I'm going to go with the AP2 and AP1. So let's do her dress. Let's see. <laughs> Stephanie, I was going to say, I love your cards, Stephanie. You just put together some of the prettiest cards. I love the one that you just did that I saw. Um, oh my gosh. I think it was a Connie Fong card. It's beautiful. And then all the paper nest doll cards that you have put together are just amazing. You're just so talented. I, I love what, looking and uh, seeing everybody's creations. Lots and lots of talented card makers out there. And I enjoy everybody's creations. And then I posted the card last night that Sandra had made for me. So I thought it was pencils. It was so delicately um, colored that I thought it was pencils, but it was markers. So Sandra, was it alcohol markers or was it a different kind of marker? Because it just stunning. This is AP1. And I had been contemplating buying those dies for a long time. And uh, now that I saw on your card how they, they look, they're so pretty. I'm going to, I think I'm going to get those dies, those Sizzik dies. They really, it was a nice size. I buy things and then they come out, they're so small. And I'm disappointed, but that's a nice size. So I'm just doing AP1. Um, and I'm going to go up here and do her sleeve. And I'm going to go back and forth a bit with this color. And right up here, I should have maybe did the lock first. So there we go. And I'm going to put another layer down here on the side. Like this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my AP2. And I'm just I'm marrying my colors together a bit. And I'm just kind of pulling this out like that and just kind of um, pull it out and over here too. I love my illustrators, um, but I wish they had a little bit lighter colors. My Copics, there's, uh, they have some really nice, nice, very light colors, but the illustrators are richer, more jewel toned, and that's fine. Just sometimes you want a little bit lighter color. And so I'm, I just kind of married them together so that I can make a little bit lighter. So there we go. All right. Then I'm going to, I'm going to marry it together again. And just kind of touch right here on the side over in here. And then what you can do is you can, um, off, you know, on a piece of paper, color off that darker color to get back to the light color because I want the light again because it really when you marry them together it really picks up the color okay so that is um, my AP 1 and AP 2 so I'm going to use this on her socks right in here and then we're going to do her boots and I'm going to show you how I make my card start to finish. Which is something I, I, I mean, I usually make a card, but I'm going to show you what I do on the inside and what I do on the back. So start to finish. That's what I'm going to do. And then I just want to make a little tiny bit of a shadow over here. Just a little bit. And then I'm going to take my lighter color and just kind of work it out just a little bit. 
Now with my Copics, I don't do that. I don't pull it out. I um, I color towards it. But with these, I pull it out because it's so dark. Okay, so here we go. Now let's, um, let's do her lock and then we'll do her boots. Because red, I'm going to do her boots in red. And red really bleeds. Let's see. Hi, Fatima. Yes, you mix both markers too. I bought some and I mix both. You know what? I do mix my Copics and my um, Spectrum Noirs together, but not when I do a live. I don't know why, but when I do a live, I feel um, like I, I should stick to one or the other just so that people, I don't know why. That's silly. I know it's silly. Um, may, this is IG5. Maybe it's a little bit obsessive compulsive disorder going on here. I feel like when I do a live, I should stick with one brand. And so sometimes I use my Copics and sometimes I use my um, Spectrum Noirs. But in reality, if I'm coloring and I'm not coloring on the live, then I will, I mix them all the time. I especially like my Copics for hair. So IG3. I think Copics give a nice uh, shine. So I do like them for hair. So this is my IG3. But I love my Spectrum Noirs when I want um, intense, intense colors. So it just kind of depends what look you're going for. And then I have um, some um, Pro Markers, and I love those too. I love my Pro Markers. I, I don't have a lot of those, I just have a few, but I love them. IG2. But I didn't invest a lot in Pro Markers because um, they're not refillable. And I, um, well, that's just kind of a waste. But the Spectrum Noirs, if you can find the ink, and the Copics are refillable. So that's why I like, and it's, you know, better on the environment if they're refillable, right? Although right now, it's difficult to get ink for the Copics. This is IG1. They've come out, they've got new ink. Not new ink, but new bottles for the ink. It's the same ink. Um, but it's just not in stock yet. So I don't know if it's because of the virus they can't get it here. Or if they're waiting for the people that sell it to uh, basically sell out of their stock. And then they're going to supply it. I'm not quite sure what's going on. But it's very hard to get the ink. So I actually I might have to buy some more markers just because I'm, I'm out of um, skin my skin colors with my Copics, which seems crazy to have to do that. Okay, so let me, um, this little keyhole uh, perplexes me. I can't decide what to do with it, what color to put in it. I have um, more than once thought about what should I do there to make it look different. So, I, I don't know, I'm gonna look at this blue-gray. And let me, um, yeah, I think I'm gonna use this blue-gray just because I, I want, you know, it's inside. So I feel like it should be um, a kind of a different color than the outside. So what I'm going to do is more than one layer on this one side to kind of give it a little bit of depth. And I think I'll use this right here on the, um, are those nuts, bolts, screws? I don't know. Indentions? I don't know. Right there. There we go. Okay, so now let me do her boots. Where do you know, do you know where to buy ink for your Noir, Spectrum Noirs? Yeah, I buy it. Actually, I buy it directly from um, Crafter's Companion. Or, you know, not Crafter's Companion, I'm sorry. From Dick Blick. And when you buy it, it comes like this. In a um, box like, well, it'll either come in a box. Actually, I just got some. That's why I know. Some came in a box like this. And some came like this uh, with you know the plastic and I got it from Dick Blicks that's where I get it from I don't get it from Spectrum Noir I get it from Dick Blicks and that's where I get my Copic ink from also but um the Copics the Copic ink is a little hard to find so I'm going to use DR6 and I'm going to use this um just kind of down the side Uh, lightly. I'm kind of not talking, sorry. Down the side, right in here. And 
over here on this side. And then right over here and over there. Where do you guys buy your ink at? Do you know where to buy ink? Okay. Um, where do you guys buy your ink at? Anybody else? I do explain to people I purchase skin tones and Copic some grays and learn how to use alcohol markers. Yes. Yep. Uh, Dick Blick has wonderful prices. And um, they are also quite reputable. If you have a problem, like one of my markers came and it was it just wouldn't work when I very first got it. And so when I told them, I asked them if they wanted me to send it back and they said no. And they gave me my money back. And then they sent me a marker. <laughs> so I, I, I got my money back and didn't even pay for that marker. And I, I did not do it, but I know that some people had ordered um, Prismacolor pencils and it was priced incorrectly. And they honored that price. It was, it was very low. They lost money. I mean, they lost money. And they honored that really low price. It was a data error. And they honored that price, which I thought was quite, you know, um, just very reputable. And then I had a friend that ordered markers, and several of them were duplicates, what she already owned. And um, they told her, they gave her her money back. So, I, you know, they didn't give her a hard time about returning them or anything. Where a lot of times they, would, they wouldn't want you to return, because it costs them money when you return. So I think they are a wonderful company. Now, I have bought from, um, I, I can't think of the name of the site, but a woman online on Facebook that sells products, too. And her prices are really good, too. I did that one time when I was taking a class with um, DR1 with Jamie from Sweet Sentiment. And it's uh, somebody that she, has, that she recommends often. And so I did it for that class. You want to find somebody that, um, you know, that's reliable. Because it is an investment. Oh my gosh. All right. So I'm just going back with my DR6 because I want some shading around here, around the edge. There we go. And red is a color you have to be really careful with. Now, for her shoes, I'm, I'm going to take my true black and I'm just going to do the soles. Just ever so lightly do the soles and then we'll do our our puppy and we'll put our card together and I'm going to show you what I do I'm going to start from finish start to finish on my cards so there we go and uh, let's do our little dog and so for the dog I did the same color um, for the key I used the IG's so I'm going to go in my IG3. Not quite the same because I used an IG5 up here. But I'm using the IG3. What do you guys prefer to color with? Is, do you have a preference between a certain kind of alcohol marker? I also like, you know, Dick Blick has markers and they're refillable. And I do have some of them, and I like them. Uh, the only thing is they do not have a lot of colors for shading, but they have a fantastic um, set of grays. So I use the grays, this is IG1. I use the grays often when I'm working on a project that I'm not doing on a live, because you can, they have a whole box of grays. Just it's unbelievable. I wish they did their regular colors like that. I think they would uh, um, take over the market if they did. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I have them right here. See their box of grays. If you can see that very well. And it's lights and warms and it's just every color gray you could think of. It's just fantastic. That's uh, something I had done early on was use the Dick Blicks. Um, but then I soon realized they didn't have colors to shade with, like the Copics and the Illustrators, except for their grays. So I didn't know why. Okay, I'm using T3. 
T in one around his little eye. So I want it to be, uh, because of the pupil, I wanted a lighter color. All right. And then I'm going to just kind of go in and put a little bit around. I don't know if you can hear my son. His bedroom's down here and he's playing a video game. And he really gets into it. <laughs> okay, so I'm using EB7. And I'm just going to kind of go around. And I'm going to work with these two colors. Mix them kind of together. And just kind of go around. And around a little bit more. And kind of down in here. Okay. Because I don't think his fur should all be one color. And I'm just going to kind of go back and forth on this. And you'll see it'll it'll come together. Almost looks like my little doggy. My little dog is now getting quite a bit of gray in his face. Man, I hope it warms up. I hope that summer gets here. Oh, I see a place that I missed uh, putting the gray on. So we'll go back over that in a minute. And like this. I'm just going to kind of mix it together. I just, I think dogs are not usually all one color. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is marry my colors together. So I'm just... Marry it together a little bit. Kind of go back and forth. Make a third color this way. Just to give him some interest. Here's his little tail. This makes him a little bit multicolor this way. Like this. I'll be so glad when this semester is over. I'm really tired. Um, it's that time of the year where I get a little tired from teaching. <laughs> Everybody thinks, oh, you're teaching from home. How great. Not really. It's a lot of work. Because I've got kids at home, too, that aren't going to school. So you're trying to wear several hats. All right. So see, he's nice and kind of multicolored. And that's what I wanted. Just kind of going in a little bit more. And a little bit here. Put it right there. And there we go. Okay, now this one. It's is it Terry Terry's Crafts? I think that is the name of the the lady on Facebook that sells um, markers, and she is a, a lovely person. And she um, Jamie recommends her IG Five. So, like I said, I have gotten markers from her. And she's a lovely, lovely person, too. And then I'm using CR3 on his tongue. I guess it's a he on his tongue. And then I'm going to go back in with my gray. And let's just go light at first to see, you know, if I need to put a little bit heavier color. There we go. And I'm going to put a little bit more down here. I think when you color, the um, ink kind of soaks in and you have to go back over a little bit where you want it to be shaded there we go so kind of go back up in here a little bit it has a bit of a harsh line and i don't like harsh lines there we go now i'm going to take my um this is a shimmer shimmer pin and i'm just going to do her ruffle just kind of do her ruffle and then right up here, her barrette, see, and her little hair, headbands, and her um, bows. There we go. I don't know. I just like doing that. <laughs> Let's see. Her first name is Terry. Yes, it's Terry, and it's Crafts with a K. Terry Crafts. And she sells markers. And what she does, she has a store online on Facebook. And what she does is she posts what she has um, available in her album. Okay, I'm going to take you guys, let me see, let me see what would be best. Let me go like this. Yeah. 
and I will come up just a little bit higher and that way you can see what I'm doing and like I said I'm going to do it from start to finish so you can see I put together my cards so let me um whoop. there we go because it's kind of stalled there for a minute I was a little bit worried okay so I'll show you what I do I am um, this is I wrote down my measurements this is um, nearly a six by six card base. When I did it, I must have cut it off just a little bit. So when I measured it, it was um, five and nine sixteenths. So I um, cut this. Oh, five and uh, thirteen sixteenths. Excuse me. That's what it is. So then I cut this, and I made it just a little bit um, smaller. Just a little bit. So this is going to be my mat. So I'm putting it down. And I want it, the card to open this time. Let's put it in the middle. This time. Um, see this way. Like this. Sometimes I like it to open this way. But this time like this. And then this is Verity paper. It's so pretty. I might move you guys up just a little bit. So let me do that. So that way you can see what I'm doing. This is Verity paper that I actually have had it for quite some time. I bought it a couple years ago. And I bought it quite reasonably. See, it's so pretty. And they have stamps themselves. But it's very pretty paper. And I just thought it really went with the paper nest dolls. So here is the paper. I, and see here's a bird so you want to have it up the right way and I'm using art glitter glue and I think the matting just um, kind of gives it a finished look but you don't have to do the matting it's kind of up to you and what I try to do is pick my paper and then I pick my colors for my markers so there we go and then I made another layer let me get that for you right here and this was um three and a half by three and a half and then i just made this like one sixteenth of an inch smaller and this see complements that paper so i'm just using my art glitter glue and i'm just going to show you start to finish how i make my cards it won't take but a few seconds longer because i've already actually cut out what i was going to show you and i'll pop it on. Okay, so I'm going to put this here, because I'm going to mat her and put her over here. So let me put this on. Like this. I look for bargains with my paper. Now, I mean, if you just go and look at paper, you're going to want to get, because there's some beautiful paper. <clears throat> but I try to look for the bargains with the paper, because um, otherwise, you know, you could spend a fortune. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm added this one. So I'm gonna put this here. And just kind of figure out where do I want to put her. Just uh, maybe like this. And I gotta be a little careful because she might still be a little bit wet. And if it's like this on the back, that's okay. Some people they're worried when they see it has bled through, but that's actually what you want. So that you know that your ink is well absorbed and it doesn't bleed outside the lines that way. Here we go, matting her. And I'm just gonna put her here, and then I, I put a true friend is a gift to cherish, which I'm gonna put down here. So I think I'll put her like that. And I could pop her up, but I am not because right now here our post office is closed on the inside, and you know you have to get it hand, um, you have to take it in to have it hand stamped. And since I can't do that, and I am actually wanting to mail this out, I am making it flatter than I normally do. So I'm going to put this, and then I've got a couple of embellishments. And then I'll show you what I do to the inside and to the back. I'm going to just put this like this. And I do love to pop her up, but I'm not today. Okay, I cut this out with a couple of small dies, and I thought, just see, it went so perfect. Okay, so I have a couple of um, embellishments and then um, 
couple of little hearts too. These were the inside, see, of this heart here. Just thought how perfect. Just so perfect. So I'm thinking to put this on. I was debating about this side, like this. I kind of think I like it over here and put these over this way. So, like that. What do you guys think? I've been making flat cards too. Yeah, I'm normally I do pop them up. I love them popped up. But if you can't get them hand stamped, what are you going to do? It already, you have to put extra for square cards, which isn't a big deal. I'm happy to do it. Very happy to do it. But I, um, you know, I plan to send these out. I have someone special to send it to. So. so I'm making it on air, and then when they get it, they're going to be like, oh, she made that card for me. <laughs> There we go. And then I'm going to do this one here. I actually already have the envelope address. But I'm not going to show you because then you'll know who it's going to. Like that. And they're watching. So, all right. Now, I'll show you what I do when I make a card. Um, I will stamp. This is just typing paper. I cut it out. Um, I think this is five and a half by five and a half. I'll cut it out. And then I will, like I stamped on this in the center. Uh, sometimes I, I do it at the bottom. Some You know, I do it where it depends how much I want to write. So I just put this on the corners like this. And you could use uh, linen paper. You could use any kind of paper you want. But I do, I use um, typing paper because my cards are heavy. And uh, this is lighter that way. So I do that. And then I take my card. And I turn it over, and I have a stamp that says Handmade with Love by Chaplain. And I try to kind of eyeball it and stamp it in the middle. So this is how I do my cards start to finish. And that way people know who they're from. And I have my insert, and I have my card. So this is how, start to finish, how I do a card. And I do normally like to pop it up, but in this case, you know, because of the, the post office being closed, this is the best I can do. Now, I know, see, I have gotten a little bit, just a little bit out of, out. So I use a jelly pen to um, go in there and clean that up just a little bit. And I also see a little smidgen of hair. So I'm going to go right here. Oops wrong end right here and then one more thing that I noticed that I didn't do so I'm going to get my um, marker make sure it's going to be light enough yeah I'm going to take my marker and kind of ground her see because she's sort of up in the air I'm just going to ground you don't want it to look like they're up in the air and a little bit more where the feet are at. There we go. Because we don't want that. And then sometimes I go around the image as well. But there we go. Start to finish. Isn't she beautiful? I just love her. And then see it's dried. And what I do when it after it dries is I go back in and I add a little bit more sparkle. Add another layer. Because you can never have enough sparkle there we go so there she is start to finish and I just think it's uh, such a cute cute image very cute now her cheeks are a little exaggerated but she's a whimsical character so um, I think that's okay but if you don't like it you can always go in with a lighter a lighter color and kind of um, tone it down a little bit if you want and then you can go around the edges and kind of tone it out see like that pull it out a little bit if you don't like the really rosy rosy cheeks and then also you can go back in and make her um, roots a little bit a little bit more definition and I often go back in and do a little bit more work on the card you know there we go and it's kind of up to you what you want to do 
I always say there's no marker, please. There are people that judge, but they're not worth your time. <laughs> there we go. So this is my image. And I thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. I will be live again on Sunday. And hopefully no more accidents, no more illness, no more, you know, problems. <laughs> And I'm not sure what I'm doing on Sunday. I guess it's like um, Gail. I don't know what, but it'll be something. <laughs> so there you go. I just, I, I love paper nest dolls. And I hope you guys love the paper nest dolls too. They're just adorable. So adorable. And I will see you guys later.